Mechanics. Welcome to another episode of House of Dula. I'm your host, Mike Dula. In this video, we are going over Eagle Bruce's electrical system. We are starting the electrical system on Eagle Bruce. This is part one of the electrical system, so let's get to it. As you know, this is my project, my 1979 Mustang Coupe that had a 2.3 liter in it originally, and it's receiving a new 2.3 liter from a 2015 Mustang, and it's a 2.3 liter EcoBoost motor. If you know me by now, you know that I'm taking you guys along the entire build, every step of the way. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of details, it's a lot of different things, because this is a different car, because it's 1979. Things are unique from 79 to 80, I'm learning, or 81. Um, and it's a unique motor, so nothing here really applies other than this unique build, but hopefully you could take some of this information and put it to your Coyote swap or Godzilla swap or whatever kind of swap you have. A lot of similar things you have to do on these custom swaps, but yeah, let's just get right into it. So this is gonna be part one of a bunch of series of videos just specifically for the electrical system. So part one of the electrical system on Eagle Bruce here. On this video, on this video on part one here, we are gonna be going over the four control pack wiring harness the layout where I plan to lay it, kind of the plan if you will, and then the basic electrical system from the battery. So really we're talking about getting power to the front of the engine and how I'm going to lay out the four control pack wiring harness to power this little EcoBoost motor. All right, so the first thing I'm really focusing on showing you at least is where I plan on running the four control pack wiring harness. Now Ford does a really, really good job explaining um, their, their harness and they set it up in a way that makes sense to the motor and definitely makes sense to a stock Mustang. So we know everything on a factory Mustang with a 2.3 EcoBoost is on, you know, the passenger side, I guess on a Coyote, it's the same way I think it is. So we're gonna kind of focus on the side of the motor because also, you know, the wiring harness that comes on the engine that came with the motor is all terminating from the passenger side as well. So I'm gonna remove this factory uh, blower box here from our AC. We'll see why in a minute, but we're gonna have to run some wires to the interior of the car for the check engine light and for um, OBD2 connecting port and uh, the pedal and some other stuff like that. So one like one leg of the harness is gonna come into the interior. And I think to make it a little bit easier, I'm just gonna remove this, uh, this box here. You can remove this whole unit without taking the whole HVAC box out and much easier. All right. Cool, now we got room. All right, just for your viewing pleasure, guys, I pulled the harness out of the car and laid it out on the floor so you can get a visual on the entire harness that you need here to run uh, the EcoBoost motor that came with a four control pack. Now I will say there's a couple other little pieces. Um, there's obviously the PCM, um, there's some jumpers, there's a O2 sensor, so this isn't everything per se, but this is the main harness here. And what's cool about the four control packs, even if you go Coyote or something like that, um, or Godzilla. I mean, they come with everything you need. So your main power wire is going to be here. You got your red and black. It's simply positive and ground. And you've got a fan control wire here that'll turn on your fan so it's nice and thick. And you got your fuse panel box. So this is all your fuses and relays. Everything you need is isolated for the motor. Right there. So that's going to go under the hood in the engine bay. And then you've got um, a pigtail that comes off the main harness over here. Now everything on this side is gonna be for the interior, okay? You've got your OBD2 port, your check engine light, so that's your check engine light that comes on if it's illuminated, something's wrong. And you've got your, um, let's see, this is your clutch switch, I believe, and one of these is your pedal switch, so this goes to the uh, to the pedal. So, you, you know, it's, it's uh, throttle by wire, fly by wire, throttle by wire, so it's electronic, the digital pedal. We've already put that in, there's a different video on that. Go back and watch that video if you're curious how we did that. And you got this connector here. Um, actually, not exactly sure what this is for yet. But these all need to go inside. This is all interior plugs. So that is kind of cool. So it branches off the harness. You can see you can put this inside the firewall, inside the engine bay. You can snake this into the car. And then the main harness following down here, you've got your main plug. that goes into the other side of your PCM or your ECU. Okay. And then you got a plug here. That also connects to the engine harness. Over here, you've got, I wanna say this is gonna be, yeah, this is a CAN bus and 12 volt key on. So obviously this goes into your factory Fox body key on location. Um, and then you've got your CAN bus wires here that I believe is used for a vehicle speed sensor um, or power steering or something like that, but we're not gonna be using that, so we'll probably clip it off. 
And then following this in, this goes to the rest of the um, engine sensors that is not already on um, the wiring harness that's built onto the motor. So you've got things like uh, the starter. So this is actually a starter plug. We'll have to remove this and put an O-ring on it um, because we have a universal starter that is not an EcoBoost starter. Um, we have a different starter. So I gotta cut this off, put a standard you know, D-ring or O-ring on it. And then we've got, let's see, what is this guy? They're labeled too. Notice that's all labeled. See, this goes your alternator, so that's cool. That'll plug into the factory alternator in the Mustang, or in the EcoBoost. Uh, this is a boost controller, I believe, and this is a intake air temperature sensor. But that's it, that's the harness right there. Now, let me show you how I'm gonna run this in the car, because I got a pretty good idea on how we're gonna do this. All right, on the EcoBoost motor, the connections for the main wire harness comes off to the passenger side here. Um, if you were to buy an EcoBoost motor from the junkyard, this is how it would come. They're gonna unplug it from the, e the PCU, or God, ECM, or PCM here, and you're gonna get it like this. So this is your main connector to everything in the motor, your harness for your, your fuel injection connectors, um, your high pressure pumps, and all your sensors, everything goes to this, which gets plugged into the computer, which so conveniently fits right here. Now, if you remember my build, one thing that I was adamant about was not, you know, I don't wanna see a lot of wires. It's also why I keep the cover on it and I want to try to get this you know engine bay keep it as tidy and clean as I possibly can because I just don't want to see a lot of clutter so obviously I've left in the firewall some holes on purpose I wanted um, you know some of the factory holes left open so I have access on both passenger and firewall side into the interior I've got this hole here which I believe was probably for vac it could have been a vacuum line maybe for the for the uh, for the AC but because this is right here, I think what I'm going to do, in fact, I don't think, I've already kind of preached fitted this, I know, but we've got one connection that's going to go here to the PCM, and then the one from the Ford Control Pack harness is going to plug into here. Now, I don't want to drape it on here. You could just plug it in here, drape it along the fender well, you know, go into your fuse box here, have your power connections, and go inside the interior for everything else, um, and be done that way. But, of course, I want to hide it. So, what I did was I installed... This right here, this is a firewall grommet. It's actually very, very thick rubber. And it was a blank, so I, I punched a hole in the center of it, and then I cut like a cross out of it so I could fit that connector. It needed to be big enough to fit, you know, this style of connector that comes with a control pack through this hole. Because what you have to do is we're gonna snake the entire harness through that hole so that we can wire tuck the harness under the fender. And the only thing that'll be left is this box here. So everything from here, my fist, back. I'm sorry, not this. <laughs> there we go. Everything from my fist back will go into um, that grommet and then this will snake inside the interior. So this will go inside. That's why we moved up the, the blower. So yeah. All right, so all I've done is run the entire harness through that hole. It's all laying out over here except for the fuse box itself, okay, which we're gonna put right here. And the connections that we're gonna fish um, inside. So I need to figure out what this is because this is a big connector that I don't have in the interior, but um, I need to look this up. This is J16. I'll look that up in the Ford manual and then I'll fish these inside because I know that these go to the uh, neutral safety switch or the clutch the clutch switch and then goes to the, um, the fly-by wire and then the check engine light. So we'll sneak that through. Don't look like it's going to make it over to the driver's side. So it may be kind of, may be kind of weird. We may have to extend those wires, but what we're gonna do now at least is get this side in the engine bay. So now that we got this here, we've got the main power wires coming out of this hole right here. Now I know this isn't going to hit the tire. I've already tested that. I've already moved it. This is all going to be tied up neat up against, you know, right up against here like we do a normal wired tuck. And the battery connection from the car is going to come out, um, you know, somewhere probably underneath the car. I think what we'll do is run it, run it alongside the channel here. Um, and then the main, I'll have a, a, you know, a panel inside of here probably for just like the main bus or a, um, a distribution block for the power. And then we'll have a main wire, you know, coming through here, or I can use this and probably just snake this inside to be honest. So I'll probably end up pulling this back in through here 
and then we'll run the main power harness through the hole here um, to get main power and main ground from inside the car. And then we'll have to use the uh, fan wire, leave it out the yellow wire and run it along the harness here and extend it to go with the fans. That'll trigger the fans come on. So right now what I want to do is just get uh, the ECU connected. So we're put, put this in, we're going to snake this through here like this. Do this one handed here. And again, this is all for mock-up. I keep telling you guys this. Unfortunately, all this hard work, uh, once it's in place and built, it's going to be stripped down um, to get painted. So, okay. Now this I'm going to this side of the motor, underneath the motor. I'm going to put it right there for right now. And then let's go ahead and get the PCM connections all plugged in here. I'll show you how it's going to look. So these are lock in, you push them in until you have to twist the lever like that. Alright. Now snake this down over here like this. It's gonna go on the bottom port. Like that. Okay, then we connect these two together. Okay, now we can tuck all that stuff out of here. Like this. All right, everything on this side of the motor, we will get underneath the car and tuck it up nice um, and find a place to wire this up, you know, cleanly. Uh, what I wanted to show you though is really what goes where. So we've got, let's see here, one goes right here to the intake. That is going to be. This guy that says air box on it needs to run. Okay. All right. So that is plugged in. Now we have the TBCM, and this is the turbocharger like boost controller um, or boost sensor. It's a pressure sensor and air take air intake temperature sensor that I forgot to put into the intake. Um, it needs to go into the intake down here, coming out of the intercooler. And that's this sensor here. So this will plug in. This comes into the intercooler outlet tube, the pipe, which is going to go into here, right there. Um, I need to get somebody to weld me in a bung for that. Um, we need to fit that in there. That's a very important piece because this measures the amount of boost coming from the from the turbo and uh, the temperature of the air coming out of the turbo. So I'm going to kind of put this back in the uh, package because I really don't want to lose it. So that'll go down there, and then down here with me oh yeah this car is getting and then this part of the harness here and again this will all be tied up guys I'm just trying to run it but this will go to the alternator oh yeah I don't know. See. this will go to the alternator there I'm not gonna plug it in and then this will go to the starter and again the starter for me is gonna be on the other side because I'm using a small block Ford bell house with the Esslinger adapter kit so we're going to, have to run the starter wire put a d-ring on it and then run it back you know snake it around through and underneath the starter motor so that's that's everything on this side of the motor this all needs to be tied up and get out of the way but for the harness that's it really hopefully you can visually kind of see what's going on here we've got the main pcm we've got the power the ground um, the fan we've got the connectors plugged in or at least in their spot where they need to go the respectable spot over here What's kind of left in this harness is is a few things. It's kind of a few things here. We've got um, these that need to go into the interior. This for our OBD2. And this, I found out what this is. I was kind of confused, but then kind of looking over the instructions here. And again, Ford gives you great instructions. I've read this thing front and back, but I still have to go back and read it all the time. Um, but they give you, you know, diagrams, um, everything you need to know but this is what i found out that plug here which makes sense this is my starter motor request ignition relay trigger and the fuel pump relay output so this is some leftover stuff that they gave me with a four control pack again guys comes with everything they even give you a uh, mega fuse and block kit for your battery so that's cool um, but this is the plug right here so this plug will plug in and then these wires right here are going to be responsible for triggering the fuel pump, which will have a relay in the back, 
a dedicated circuit in the back here for the fuel pump, uh, just bypassing the Ford stuff because this is not a fuel injected car. So we're going to put a, a relay in the back of the car. I'm going to put a box back there probably, um, put it near the fuel pump. And then that wire is going to run back to the trigger uh, the fuel pump to turn on. Man, it turns out I had a lot more slack. Um, I pulled pulled it, let me, uh, so you can probably see it there. I've got it kind of tied or draped underneath. Let's go around here. All right, man, I don't think this could fit any better. So I've got a lot more slack in this harness. I didn't realize it was kind of looped out here. So once I pulled that through, it gave me another good maybe two feet. So now we've got all this to here. It'll tuck neatly uh, behind the blower motor back there and route underneath the HVAC box. And guess what? A couple good things, a couple not so good things. The, the throttle position sensor, the throttle position plug is perfect. It's right here and it goes right to the top of this. It's gonna fit. However, my plug looks to be binding against the clutch um, quadrant, uh, just this part of the plug. So. I'm gonna have to loosen the pedal up and move it over just a little bit this way. I made that pedal bracket, so no big deal. I'll alter it um, so that it's a little bit adjustable this way. No big deal. The only thing, oh yeah, look at this. The OBD2 port is gonna come out right here. I mean, I could put it on an ashtray. I could put it maybe even, maybe even in, in the ashtray, you know? So lots of options, that's kind of cool but it's in a good spot. Um, I mean, it essentially can go, you know, right here and it looks like factory spot. It's perfect. And this guy is absolutely just a little bit too short. No big deal. It's two wires. So we will have to extend this one. The point of this is to know when you're pushing the clutch pedal in. It's also a, uh, a safety start switch so that you can't start the car without the clutch pedal in. Man, so that is actually pretty incredible. The harness fits a Fox body without modification. I was not expecting that. Um, you know, this is gonna tuck up nice and neat up here once we get the, you know, get it all tucked in. Um, the fuse box, I like it right here. It's in a good spot. It's accessible. It'll be underneath some AC hoses, no big deal. This is in a good spot. I mean, and ultimately, if you come back and you step back and look at it, We'll have some AC lines here, but that's it. So the engine bay stays clean. There isn't wires going across anywhere. Now, yeah, I'm excited. It's a lot, it's just, this is a big milestone. I've been staring at this thing for so long, just thinking, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? I was gonna recruit help, have people come over, but I have a game plan. Like I feel like I can do this now and it's, it's making me excited. So. Distribution block, we'll get this thing figured out. That's your power. Oh, oh, the one thing I didn't show you guys and I forgot to tell you about is I have actually installed the battery box. So the battery box is here. It's already in place, guys. It is on the floor, it's solid. I don't have any battery lines to it. <clears throat> However, I did install this the exact same way that I installed it on my 86. In fact, this is the same box that I use on my 86. I found this on the Summit scratch and dent aisle and everything was in place. It was super cheap, like a quarter off. So I said, why not? So I installed the battery in it just so we have it ready to go. I've got battery cables coming so we can start making battery cables. And this is a good spot. Of course you want it on the passenger side um, and to the back. And you wanna make sure it doesn't hit your hinges. So this guy installed a couple days ago, um, did the exact same way I did on my 86, took some studs, basically just welded them to the floor. What I like about that is it's not gonna go anywhere. The studs is holding the battery in place and you don't have to worry about anything getting loose underneath the car. 
So once the battery welds are studded in, it's also a good spot to use as a rear ground. I do that on my 86 and I use one of the studs as a ground to help ground the chassis in the back of the car. Man, guys, that is a lot, a lot we went over. So the only thing left in the four control pack kit would be our O2 sensor. Okay, so that'll happen when we have exhaust and can weld it. Um, that box is already taken whatever's in it. And this goes to your starter. So if you actually have the original starter, which I do, see this is like a, a proprietary plug. This is the original starter here. So it would plug, you know, I don't know, somewhere like this, right? So anyways, that's the, that's the original starter. Can't use it. This whole harness we're not gonna be able to use anyways. It's good cable though, so maybe I use it. Use it for something. Yeah, there's your starter plug that I was showing you earlier underneath the car. So we'll have to cut this off, put a D-ring on it, and um, this goes, I believe, actually, this is probably what's your alternator. Yeah, yeah, that's what this is. This is the alternator cord cable. So we're gonna custom make all this anyways. Alternator cable, starter cable, all that stuff's gotta be custom made because of the placement. Otherwise, man. Man, guys, that is it. That's a wrap. Next video, what we're gonna do is mount the ECU. We gotta actually mount it to the firewall here. Um, and start cleaning up cable and wires and start making distribution blocks and running power cables from the back of the car um, once they come in. So I got stuff coming in, um, so stay tuned for that. We're gonna finish up the electrical in here and start hooking up fuses and mega fuses and relays and one thing I also forgot to mention is we have to run a dedicated circuit to my Volvo power steering, which is on the opposite side. We've gotten lucky so far, everything's been on this side, but we're going to have to cross over and send power to the Volvo pump. I got a video on the Volvo pump. Go back and check that out if you want. Uh, the Volvo pump is an electric hydraulic power steering uh, reservoir and pump that's gonna provide us power steering on this car which is going to be super neat and the way I'm wiring up is going to be kind of cool too because it has a uh, 10 second delay relay so that it won't kick on right when you start the car to wait 10 seconds and then kick on um anyways man I'm so excited listen I'm gonna pull the Torino in get ready for the night that's a wrap we'll see you guys next time follow me on Instagram okay check out all my content before you see it here go to housetodoolo.com Check out all the content and the videos and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed in one and the store if you want to buy some house to do the swag. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on Eagle Bruce here on House of Doula. See you guys.